you know, as, as anti uh, automated driving as I am, I might almost rather see some robots. At least they're not going to be <laughs> looking at screens. <laughs> That's or, right. uh, Those of you who tuned into the last Overdrive Radio edition, you'll recognize that as the voice of Wisconsin headquarters July Trucker of the Month, Mike Nichols. Hauling today leased to Wayne Transports with a beautiful two tone 2020 Freightliner Coronado. Stacks behind the cab and a nod to the cab overs of old, where he got his first taste of truck ownership back in the 1980s. Part of the story told in part one of our talk with him. Overdrive news editor Matt Cole, you'll hear interjecting some of the questions throughout again this week in part two. That's right, we're picking up where we left off with part two, featuring Nichols' perspective on recent history, revenue, and income. Awesome. I actually made more money in 22 than I did 23, but I think a lot of that is an artifact of the high fuel prices. Right. Leased to Wayne Transports and hauling dry bulk freight for customers there, Nichols notes. We've got a good fuel surcharge, and so... You know, you're covered on that. Uh, and the other thing I really like about Wayne is there's, there isn't any Mickey Mouse games with detention. You spend more than an hour and a half or two hours at a particular customer, you're paid by the hour. I mean, if it's, uh, if it's a delay that's on the customer's end. I mean, that's time is money, you know, and if you're sitting there. Man, I, w- I could have only dreamed of that when I was pulling that reefer around. You know, well, loaded chickens down yeah. in Arkansas. <laughs> and they're bringing you out a pallet, one, like one pallet an hour, you know, so you're you're actually cold storage for them for 20 hours, sitting in the Arkansas sun. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then they want you to haul it back up to Wisconsin for a buck 20 a mile or whatever it was back then. You know, this is, like I said, 20-some years ago. But I imagine that sounds familiar, no doubt, to some of you. After the break, we'll drop back in with further recollections of those days running Reefer, moving through his approach to health insurance retirement planning, and, as he intimated up top, perhaps the biggest challenge any owner-operator contends with today. Safety on highways where distraction has become a norm. It's not easy, to say the least. I'm a firm believer in loud pipes save lives because people aren't paying attention. Before the very end, too, a window on a stunning 2023 389 in the small fleet of West Lawrence Logistics in Town Creek, Alabama, piloted by three-year company hauler Jared Mullenix. So keep tuned. Every season is diesel season, so power up yours with Howes. Poor quality fuel can wreak havoc on your engine even in the warmer months. Protect your diesel with Howes diesel additives and lubricants. 100% alcohol free and made with the highest quality ingredients. Howes products will keep your diesel vehicles and equipment running strong all year long. Visit HowesProducts.com to find out which product you need today to keep your engine running like new tomorrow. Howes, tested, trusted, guaranteed. Find more information about all of Howes fuel treatments and more at H-O-W-E-S, HowesProducts.com. Here's owner-operator Mike Nichols, looking back on those reefer days to bring us on up to the present, pulling dry bulk, leased to Wayne Transports. Oftentimes what I would wind up doing when I was in the reefer is I'd go out loaded with a good rate and I'd get frustrated that the rates they're trying to give me come back. I'm like, well, you know, what is a backhaul anyways? I mean, isn't isn't my backhaul somebody else's front haul? <laughs> so, yeah, right. I mean, basically you just get a discount because I'm away from home and you think you can get, you know, get away with it. And I'd get frustrated and just come back empty. And so I kept my pride, but I blew the rate, you know, the outbound rate then was half and uh, just didn't work. But, you know, ultimately, like I said, I wound up selling the reefer and, uh, and uh, it was a factory buyback on the, uh, on the truck. So, If you missed last week's episode, owner-operator Nichols told the story there of the factory buyback courtesy of Wisconsin's unique lemon law. Unique in that it applies not only to light-duty vehicles, but also commercial trucks. The experience soured him on truck ownership for quite a time, as he notes in What Follows. That truck he had christened the Lisa Marie after his wife who'd passed in a car crash that also injured Nichols in the early days of his marriage and trucking career. Story also told in part one of this podcast. And then it was, you know, from that point till the Lisa Marie 2 was a good, oh, 15 years or so that I was, you know, just doing other stuff, company driver, etc. And so Ooh. I kind of ran the gamut. I pretty much pulled dry van, you know, pneumatic bulk, liquid tank, uh, dump, end dump, uh, reefer, and livestock. 
And one, a couple of times I actually had to rent a flatbed and uh, pick up some railroad ties and some nursery stock. That was okay. when I first was getting started in the business. And I did it enough to know I didn't want to pull a flatbed. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I envy those guys a lot, but uh, I just, uh, it's not for me. It's been a central theme in our coverage of July Trucker of the Month, Nichols' career. The virtue, knowing your own limitations. You see him on the side of the road or you see where your load shifted, you know, a load of pipe or something. And I'm just like, oh, man, I would not want to be that guy. As noted, he's found a home in dry bulk, leased to Wayne Transports, his primary partner for freight and more, six years running. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad I do what I do. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, good, it's a good gig. I mean, you got to, you know, it takes a little bit of knack to figure out, you know, best ways to unload and different products unload at different pressures and speeds and things like that. But, you know, once you're doing it for a while, it's, uh, it's really a breeze, you know? Yeah. Only issue I don't like, I'll, I'll, I will say, is uh, I'm not a big fan of heights as far as ladders and climbing on stuff. And once in a while, you got to get up on the trailer. We got fall protection, but uh, it doesn't matter. I'm still, I don't like it. I, in fact, I can't even watch other people up on the trailer. I have to look away. Because, you know, you got guys that are just like, you know, they're basically dancing across the top of that thing. And <laughs> No, I, uh, I wanted to keep my center, my, my center of gravity low, so bought a good set of knee pads and I just climb across the top only real drawback that I that I feel like you know that I have with it but you know everything's got its uh pluses and negatives or whatever and that's a pretty small negative considering all the all the all the pluses looking back at 2023 overall um you know how do you feel like business went for you I I'm, again I made about 60 or 70 thousand less than 2022 but as I said I think that was part of the fuel surcharges I was off a couple weeks towards the end of 2023, so that definitely hit the bottom line a little bit. But um, no, we 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 made money. I do, you know, my own day to day bookkeeping, expense tracking, and things like that. But I have a I have a a CPA that actually does the tax preparation, uh, payroll tax, workman's comp, or not workman's comp, uh, unemployment um, contribution. You know, for your uh, unemployment insurance. So it's all, you know, we're all on the books with everything. Works out real well doing it that way. Pretty reasonable fee that I pay them each month. And uh, they take care of all that, all that book work. They are not trucking specific. I do believe he has, you know, several clients that are uh, independent contractors, owner operators, but he, he knows the business. Let's put it yeah. that way from the, from the tax end. And he is, like I say, he is a CPA. So um, yeah, that helps out. And I don't, but, Wayne takes care of all your uh, mileage reporting and all that stuff. That's part of your, that's part of your lease. So I don't have to worry about that. So looking at uh, 2024 so far, um, you know, how is it, how's it going compared to, uh, compared to last year? A little slower. Uh, not because of freight being slow. I just, I had a, I had a deer strike in March. So I was down from that. I was uh, out sick for a little while uh, in January. And then um, ruptured a blood vessel in my knee and was off for about two weeks from that. So just personal rise, you know, I've had uh, some hiccups or whatever this year, but staying busy since. Busy as I want to be, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Still kind of playing catch up, you know, from being off a little bit, but um, we're getting her there. How many miles have you run this year so far? Ballpark? 60, maybe. Okay. 60,000. I'm not a big mileage intensive uh Kind of guy. I mean, sure. I always get yeah. a kick out of seeing, seeing the backs of trailers. This is more miles, more money. <laughs> like, I don't necessarily want to work more miles, you know? Right. I, I generally run, you know, on a full week, uh, I'll generally run two to 2,500, but they're profitable miles. And so that's what matters, you know? You've kind of gone out on your own to get uh, health insurance. What, uh, what have you found that works for you there? You know, unfortunately, the Affordable Care Act, uh, that was passed kind of ruined the private health insurance market. If you're buying health insurance on your own, uh, you're pretty much looking at going into the, uh, to the marketplace, as they say, you know, so it's, uh, you get a, you know, basically a choice of health plans that are, that are eligible. You can choose. And then there's a, you know, a subsidy that's available if you don't have enough income to cover all of that. I do pay something every month, but uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I'd, I'd like to have something different, and I'm hoping that uh, sooner or later I can make a switch 
And uh, I, I mean, I'm not really super happy with it. You know, you, health insurance, you know, the deductibles and the co-payments are such now that uh, you know, a lot of times you'd be better off going into one of those cost sharing plans, you know, like a, a medical benefit sharing, you know, deal where it's yeah. not really insurance. Everybody just kind of, it's like a pool, right? Right. Yep. And I've kind of been thinking about looking into that. Also, uh, well, Wayne has some insurance options through True North and OIDA um, has some different insurance options that I've been uh, considering looking at. Big time, I'm, I'm, I'm huge into OIDA. I love OIDA. What a, what a great organization and association. Have you ever been on the board or anything for OIDA or are you just active member? Interesting that you ask. I'm, uh, they accepted my nomination this year. The, uh, the nominating committee approved my nomination and they invited me to come down to their fall meeting. So I will uh, go down there. I'll do a little interview that's on their, uh, their Landline Now podcast. If uh, the membership, the voting membership likes what they hear, hopefully they'll vote for me. But yeah, kind of excited to do that for sure. And, Indeed. you know, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of media outreach because I think that's something, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not an ace mechanic or anything like that. So that's not really my forte in the trucking business, but definitely, you know, media exposure, outreach, uh, writing op-ed pieces, those things I certainly can do and, and have done. Trucking has, has been under attack for as long as I can remember as far as, uh, as, far as uh, regulatory environment goes. You know, definitely the, uh, the emissions challenges that uh, they've been ramping up every year really motivate me to speak out against that. That's a big motivator. Back in 2005, they, they came out, I think it was right around 2005, they came out with uh, ultra low sulfur diesel. And I, I distinctly remember telling a couple people, I'm like, you realize they're not gonna be happy with this. I mean, that's not going to, you know, and sure enough, you know, what is it about every three years, they want something new. They want, you know, more restrictions. Where does it go? You know, I just, I can't make a case for an electric vehicle. It costs twice as much, does half the work and lasts half as long. I just don't know how anybody can make a business case for that. And, and then not only that, but the power generation challenges. A company, a company out of Joliet, Illinois, that was going to electrify his whole fleet and the city utility said, you're going to use as much power as the rest of the town. You can't do it. It's just completely not workable, especially for what I do. You know, how would you right. ever do that? I don't know. Maybe someday yeah. it will be, you know, and maybe, you know, if the market will choose whatever makes the most sense. You know, government never seems to get that. They have to mandate it. If you have to mandate it, it's probably not good for you in some other, you know, that's, that's why they mandate it, because they know nobody else would do it of their own volition. Regular listeners will recall Nichols' truck is a Freightliner Coronado glider with a Detroit factory reman engine. Pre-emissions. He's certainly a testament to that, and notes he'll probably keep that truck as long as he can. Owner-operator Nichols has plenty of road ahead of him, but the subject then did turn to retirement and how the owner approaches preparing for it. I have some, uh, modest uh retirement plan savings um i honestly don't you know I'd, I'd really like to see myself driving as long as i pretty much can right uh assuming assuming everything else stays the same <laughs> assuming there's still human drivers and trucks i guess at that point <laughs> but uh um you know i i just i feel like i want to drive you know do what i'm doing until they throw dirt on one of us I don't really see myself just hanging up the keys and sitting at the house. Maybe that's ultimately what will happen. You know, if medically I can't drive or something, but right. so far, no problems. So I'm, uh, I feel good. I am 56. So I'll definitely like to see myself drive in another 10 to 15 years for sure, at least. I mean, we've got guys, and you know, I've seen guys on the road that are, you know, late 70s that are still running. You know, you don't have to run it. You know, it doesn't mean you have to work as hard. You don't have to be hair on fire you know, six days a week or whatever, um, you know, but if you're, you may as well stay busy. And, uh, um, and I think that's a great way to do it, you know? And again, I'd like to, uh, I like to do my advocacy stuff as much as I can, you know, yeah. time is always just, you know, do I have the time to do it? But usually what'll happen is, is I'll read something, you know, in some news site or whatever, that'll just kick me off <laughs> and then I'll, <laughs> I'll start firing off letters to the editor or op-eds or whatever, you know, most of the time they don't get printed, but you know, every once in a while, for sure. Yeah. And you know, I've made some media contacts. So OIDA has given me a bunch of media leads, you know, if they want, 
you know, a media wants to wants a trucker to comment on something um, that recently just happened. I still work with them quite a bit as far as uh, connecting with members of the media. I think I did four interviews in one week, uh, just like a month or two ago. Fox and New York Times, Washington Post, and that includes some measure of intra-trucking advocacy as well, particularly with respect to so-called safety technology the bedrock's necessity of effective training, and more. There's no substitute for an experienced driver with good judgment. And they just, honestly, a lot of them don't seem to care. You know, they think they can augment uh, a low-skilled driver with technology. And I'm always like, you know, why don't they spend the same amount of investment in, um, you know, not only compensation, but in training? Yeah. And the government, you know, the training standards that they have are nowhere near enough. And even at that, these companies are constantly applying for waivers and things like that that's in the register, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, well, we want the trainer to be able to sleep. Well, wait, if he's in the bunk, how is he training? Right. You know, that's crazy. You just, what you want is you want a team driver. You want team drivers and you want one of them to not make as much. That's, that's what you want. And unfortunately, they seem to be getting it. FMCSA yeah. seems to be... Uh, approving their uh, their requests for uh, exemptions yeah at least in the cases where the driver or where the trainee has passed their um cdl skills test which then i mean you know that's as green as you can get as a as a driver exactly that... you bet you bet and i you know i guess maybe these big big you know mega outfits are self-insured so you know, otherwise yeah. I was just going to say, you know, I, I can't imagine the insurance company would be on board with that, but I suppose most of them insure themselves. So for any, uh, any up and coming or, um, you know, aspiring owner operators, uh, you know, what advice would you give? Be careful on the terms, uh, shop around for the terms. So if you're, you know, don't take the first offer. Oftentimes if uh, you've got decent credit, you can, um, you can find a better rate you know, than going through the, the dealership where you're financing it. I mean, they're making money on that rate, just like they are making money on selling you the truck. You know, if they'll get the rate at, you know, say 6% and try to sell you at eight, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I saved myself almost, I think two and a half percentage points shopping around and going through a private bank uh, on the financing as opposed to what the dealer was offering me. You know, interest rates now are, you know, I, I don't know that I could do it or would do it, I should say, you know, I pay five and a half percent on my, on my note. So it's, it's uh, the hard parts passed. I'm uh, about three quarters of the way paying for it. Maybe, maybe two thirds, you know, watch, you know, have some reserve cash mm-hmm. on hand so you can cover an emergency, you know, and don't short on your maintenance, um, you know, because that's, if you take care of the truck, it will take care of you. I, you know, every time I'm uh, at a dealership or even, you know, even over at our local shop here at JR, uh, JR Truck Repair and Fabrication, um, it seems like they're working on one or two trucks with emissions problems. You know, that's almost always what it is. I just can't imagine taking on all that extra, all that extra burden. I mean, you have to, you have to, but, and of yeah, course, they, like I say, they've gotten better, but they're expensive and, you know, there's maintenance and, um, you know, additional weight, mm-hmm. of course. Nichols is well over 2 million miles into a safe career. No DOT recordable crashes over all the miles. A fender bender early on in his career in a snowstorm, though, proved instructive in some ways. It was probably preventable, and that was in 91, okay. uh, in a snowstorm in Illinois, coming up I-39. I was about 10 miles from the house. You know, they always say accidents happen close to home. Yeah. But I was in a... Uh, my regular truck had broke down, so I didn't have a radio, a CB, and it was a blinding snowstorm, something that I, you know, now I would never even dream of driving in, right? But, you know, I was maybe young and a little little more naive back then and was trying to get home, you know, the get-home-itis. And uh, I was probably only doing like 10 miles an hour, but traffic was stopped in front of me. The road was icy. And uh, the ladder, um, I was pulling a delivery van or uh a dry van, like a 40, 45 foot dry van with a curbside door that had a ladder on it. And that ladder caught the quarter panel of an Oldsmobile that was stopped in traffic. Mm-hmm. But uh, nobody was hurt. Damage was pretty minimal, you know, maybe a couple thousand bucks or something at the time. Yeah. And uh, but that's it as far as, uh, as far as accidents go. 
Well, what do you think it takes, um, you know, in today's world with uh, all the distractions of, oh. uh, you know, four-wheel drivers and all that kind of thing to, uh, you know, to, to remain a, a safe driver? I can't, I can't underscore it or print it in bold, highlighted uh, letters enough. Spacing, following distance. Nobody respects following distance anymore. Trucks and cars. I shouldn't say nobody. I mean, don't speak in absolutes, but a huge percentage of people are driving within a second. And I, I never, I never, I always wonder like how these big companies do that because I always thought that they had this adaptive cruise or whatever that would slow the truck down if they get too close or whatever. But you see them and they're less than, they're like a truck length or less apart. Right. And I, I don't know how you can go down the road like that. I mean, uh, my anxiety wouldn't allow me to do that. I don't want to <laughs> be a participant in an accident. I would much rather be a witness. You know, right. I want to, I'll watch from here back here, guys, you, you have at it. But when you're in a big group of people like that, you're essentially tendering control of your, of your vehicle to that other guy. You're only going to be as good as the weakest driver when you're in a herd. And so I want clean air. That's my secret. I'm always looking for clean air, whether it means I got to slow down or speed up. I'm trying to stay away from the pack. Harder and harder to do nowadays. Infrastructure is in. A, a woeful state as far as, as I'm concerned, you know, there's too much traffic, you know, roads that are four lane highways really need to be six, you know, I'm on, you know, places like interstate 40 that there's just too much traffic. You're out in the middle of art in the middle of Arkansas on interstate 40 and it's just, you know, bumper to bumper traffic all the way across and it's all going 60, 70 miles an hour until there's some sort of incident and then it stops. Right. But yeah, people drive too fast and they drive too close. And of course, the the distractions like the screens. Everybody is is pinching and swiping and scrolling all the time, and uh, it infuriates me. I mean, I'm I'm watching people that are merging, and they can't even wait to get going in traffic. They're actually on their phones, staring at their screen as they're merging. And I'm like, you know, what are the odds that that person's paying attention to me? I can't move over. There's somebody on the left side of me, you know. So, I'm a firm believer in loud pipes save lives because people aren't paying attention. And, you know, if I need to bark the Jake at you or something to, to make you look up, then that's what I'll do. It is unbelievable how distracted uh, people are. And unfortunately, I see it in trucks now too, an awful lot. And I don't know what, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know a good way to fix it. People are addicted to their screens. The guy's got his foot on the dash and he's watching YouTube or something. Yeah, and I'm like, unreal. this is unbelievable. You know, I, honestly, at that, you know, as as anti uh, automated driving as I am, I might almost rather see some robots. At least they're not going to be <laughs> looking at screens. <laughs> That's but, right. Uh, it's uh, the distractions are just huge, and I think that's the the biggest the biggest killer out there. And well, that and following distance. Yeah, I can't under, I can't overstate that. Uh, one thing I do like. Uh, that I'm normally I probably would not be a big advocate of is Wayne incorporated the uh, Netrodyne system. I think you probably are familiar with that. It's a uh, it's a camera only looks forward. Ours mm -hmm. don't look backwards, although I guess it can. Um, but then it you know it's rating you every day as far as how you're driving, following distance, speed, uh, unsafe turns. You know if you're pulling extra uh, extra G's, you know that lateral G's or something going around a roundabout. You know, it's, it's looking at all that stuff. And I like having an objective metric. I mean, I know how I'm driving because I've been doing it long enough, but yeah. it's nice to be um, reaffirmed, if you will, by that. And so I like that. I think that's been a, a, good, a good investment. And I think, I think they're pretty happy with it as well. Um, we've only been using it now for about a year, I think. But uh, I think it works out real well. Is it a requirement um, that all their you know, independent contractors put them in the trucks? Yep. Uh, all, every truck, I think, has them now. I think it's wise. I think it's a good investment. And, um, you know, the cameras, of course, you know, I like, the, I like a forward-looking camera. So it is, you know, uh, hopefully going to protect me in case of, uh, you know, a accident or a frivolous lawsuit or something. I actually have my own camera on my GPS, and then I have two cameras looking backwards okay. uh, from Diesel Boss. Because uh, I always think, you know, the way people drive, you know, they, they're always driving too fast for conditions. 
and uh, somebody gets loose and they bump into me in the back, who's to say that they don't say, well, he came into my lane. Right. You know, I want that on, I want that on record. So I think that was a good investment. Oh, another huge safety feature I love is I have the road watch um, road surface temperature sensor, you know, it's infrared. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when you're, you know, you're driving, you know, typically like you'd be driving in a cold November day or something, or maybe it's, it's raining out, but on the verge of freezing, it's nice to have that, to have that confirmation that it's not freezing yet. You're not just looking for tire spray and stuff like that. And it's, it's super sensitive. I, it, you can actually, like when you're going across a bridge, you'll see how it'll, you know, to drop a few degrees and then mm-hmm. right away go back up. Or if you're going through like, you know, in the shades, shadows of trees or whatever, uh, you'll see the temperature change like instantly. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big help. I recommend those a lot. And, you know, and again, uh, something else too is, uh, you know, I'm pretty risk adverse. Uh, I don't want claims. I don't want damages. I don't want accidents. So if I, you know, my risk benefit calculation has gotten way more conservative as I've gotten older and more experienced. And, you know, you see these guys in the ditch, you know, even if there's nobody else involved and even if they keep the shiny side up, that's still like a $10,000 deal to get pulled out of there. You know, I don't risk it. Um, you know, if you're empty or something, then I get even way more conservative. So I'd much rather wait it out somewhere than uh, and take a chance, um, especially if you don't have to, you know. I mean, yeah. if, you know, if somebody's, somebody's, somebody's out of product or something, you know, then that risk-benefit calculation changes a little bit. But, um, you know, if it's something that, if, it, if it's, you know, if it's late, it, you know, because of the weather, then it's late. And being communicative with the customers is always huge. So I'm the first person to say, hey, you know, this might be a little late or might be running into this. And, you know, most things can be worked out before they become, uh, you know, problems. Here's wishing him luck in our Truck of the Year competition for 2024. We've got a few more monthly honorees coming your way through October. And then it's on to three finalists, the winner, the new year. You can put your own business in the running at overdriveonline.com slash top trucker. The program sponsored by Commercial Vehicle Group and Bostrom Seating. Owners of up to three trucks are eligible to compete. Prizes include a Bostrom seat as well as a custom replica of the tractor, the owner's choice. Again, you can find the nomination and entry form at overdriveonline.com slash top trucker. Finally, for this Overdrive Radio edition, a bit of a window on one among the last of the 389s with a 2023 model Peterbilt and its driver. One Jared Mulnix, now hauling for Miles Parker's West Lawrence Logistics small fleet of Town Creek, Alabama. The rig was parked up at the Large Cars and Guitars truck show this past May, next to a slightly older 389 driven by Lee Nurse in the fleet of Miles Parker's father, Mac, called Mamzak. Mulnix ran us through his purple effect paintwork, striping, and more mods done to the rig, including a chrome surround on the digital dash. Along the way, detailing what drove the former Florida police officer to take up trucking just a few years ago, finding a home with the West Lawrence small fleet after a time flatbedding with TMC. Here's Mullenix detailing his name for the truck. My handle or what it, TikTok name is the Rowdy Rooster. Okay. And so <laughs> going with the chicken theme, I call it Foul Attitude. Name's Jared Mullenix. I work for West Lawrence Logistics out of Town Creek, Alabama. Truck is owned by Miles Parker. It's 2023 uh, Peterbilt 389, Cummins 565, 18 speed, 370 rear ends, 24 five tires. So we mainly do 90% Conestoga, 10% flatbed, mostly uh, aluminum and steel. Where's Tim Creek? So it's about 30 minutes uh, west of Decatur, out there towards Muscle Shoals, Tuscumbia area. I live in Florida. He bought it uh, December of 2022. Okay. Had 167 miles on it. I, I went straight into it, and it's now got 170 in it. Said so you got the watermelons underglow. Yeah. Water yeah. Lights, bumper lights. Most of the accessories were either from Rockwood uh, Roadworks or Horse and Buggy accessories. <laughs> we're waiting on a T-bar from 12 Gave Customs. Yeah. Um, being custom built for the fenders and stuff, but we're also having our logo cut in the middle and backlit takes a little bit to get that in but chrome country been at chrome country has been uh working with us with that 
It's right there at the Rush Truck Center in Smyrna, Tennessee. A lot of you know, a lot of places we haul for like like to look at the trucks. So they would ask for us over the other other competition. It's called Purple Effect, but uh. it's a custom Purple Effect because they added more flake to it. Rush Peterbilt up there at Smyrna, they did the custom stripe on it. So okay. All the trucks have you know different colors different stripes but they're all 389s or 379s i was a police officer and deputy sheriff for approximately 10 years wow um got tired of the politics got tired of living in a glass house yeah um i like to throw rocks so that didn't mesh well with the industry my father was a truck driver my uncle my grandfather's brother uh he was he owned his own logging company out of mississippi ever since i was little i was always in mississippi you know helping him and doing stuff so when I got tired of being a police officer I was like I'm gonna go do it so here I am anything else on the interior uh, worth noting um, I'm still working on the interior it's a uh, miles lets me do whatever I want so sure. I do it within reason you know at a time not all at once right. but once it's like I said it is a working truck so yeah, totally. if it's down if it ain't moving and we ain't making money so I like to make money. He likes to make money. He also <laughs> likes to have nice things. So, <laughs> how long? Uh, how long you been driving total? Uh, total three years. Did ten months with West or uh, TMC, and uh, my goal. Obviously, everybody's goal is to own their own, you know, big hood truck. And uh, ten months into it, I was like, I'm tired of the big company. So, my my buddy worked for another small company up there in Tuscumbia. He said, hey, look into Mamzak. So put an application. Matt called me and said, hey, you only got 10 months, but you can go work for my son. And I was like, I'll be there. So literally two weeks later, driving for miles. The Foul Attitude 2023 389 and the 2019 389 parked next to it caught my eye for the color combinations, mostly at first. Keep tuned for more views of the rig Mullinix detailed there in a video in our custom rig series late next week. And catch both trucks in the post that will house this podcast when it goes live Monday, August 12, 2024 at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. Again, owner operators can enter Overdrive Truck of the Year competition via overdriveonline.com slash top trucker. Get your nomination in before we get to October for consideration in this year's round. You can find a direct link to that page in the show notes, wherever you're listening. Overdrive Radio is on Spotify and SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts and YouTube, Overdrive's Facebook page, and any listening platform, really. Big thanks to you for listening. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter Long Haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer. Featuring the guitar work of Travis, the snake man himself, Wemmick. Terry Tupsock, which is on bass. Keys by Tisha Mingo, Jim Whitehead. And on drums, Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own social media coordinator, Jasmine Campbell. News editor, Matt Cole, who we heard from today. Executive editor, Alex Lockie. And video editors, Lawson Rudisil and Andrew Gwynn. See you next time.